Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Driving in the Philippines. And a little travel news, some interesting travel news. A little bit, uh, I've been searching the news sources, uh, not just in the Philippines, but around the world, trying to get some hints of what's going on. And there, there are a few things going on. Um, anyway, come along on this trip. Um, this is um, I'm riding my motorbike from uh, Gaisano Country Mall in Benilad. I believe it's in Benilad, Cebu City. And uh, somebody's going to tell me that it's in Mandawi, maybe. Anyway, um, I am headed to J Center Mall and to BO Insurance, where they are processing my registration. I just finished uh, doing my smog test here a number of days ago and uh, going to take the uh, information over to them and um, tell you a little bit about, uh, about the process along the way, a little bit about driving in the Philippines and uh, a little bit about uh, the news. There, there, have been a, there have been a couple people who have come into, flown into Cebu City. Uh, without being vaccinated, no vaccination, and has to do with Governor Garcia of Cebu Province making an executive order a number of months ago saying that uh, based on all the guidance she would allow unvaccinated people into Cebu on the condition that they undergo a quarantine period. And uh, this particular person, in fact, I will I will uh, give you a little more information about him and his process a little later. Um, anyway, people people are doing it. Uh, the second person that, that I'm aware of, he was declined initially, but he rebooked his flight, got some money back, refund, rebooked his flight, and with the proper documents was able to travel there again with uh, quarantine in Cebu. Now, can't do that yet going to Manila um, and uh, well let me talk a little bit about the travel situation I've been I've been reading a number of articles and uh, I have read one a while back that kind of was gave me some optimism that said August 2022 where we are in right now would be a good time to start uh, reducing the restrictions opening up the country I read that from one of the uh, one of the people in the new administration, Marcos administration here. Uh, just had a presidential election, got a new administration, a lot of new people in in the government system. Uh, and then just uh, today, I read an article, and and a guy said, "You see, the, the the problem with these articles, you don't know if the person making a statement." newspaper people take a statement from somebody you don't know if that person actually has the authority to make decisions if they are an influencer in the government but let's just suppose he was he she was and he made the statement that until we get 50 percent of eligible individuals with their first booster shot which would be about 24 million people we're not even going to talk about uh, lessening the restrictions whatever that means that could mean many different things around the country doesn't necessarily uh, speak specifically to international tourists coming here so I do know that from talking to a lot of Filipinos there there is a lot of hesitancy here there's uh, for a number of factors and uh, YouTube doesn't like people talking about a lot of those factors so I'm not going to get into them many of you are aware of things going on around the world uh, in regard to this topic anyway getting back to the trip here um, I am riding my Rusi 250 and uh, I'm hoping that uh, in the next day or two I can get out on the road and, and take a several dra a day trip at least partly around Cebu island and uh, put up some video of what's going on and I'm kind of an explorer I'm going to explore and, and travel different areas go down some some uh, less traveled roads although here in the Philippines you've got a you've got a relatively small country it's uh, land wise it's about the same size of Arizona or about the same size of Nevada 
I think Italy is a little bit larger than the Philippines land area. Uh, Arizona, the state of Arizona, the USA, has 7 million people. The Philippines has about 113 million, according to the last data I s I've seen. So that's a lot of people, and that means there's a lot of people on the roads. Uh, a number of years, I think, about the time I came here, 2015, for the first time, they started loosening up the credit. Put one peso down, and if you have a job, will sell you a car, basically, is what it was explained to me. And so a lot of people have cars and vehicles. A lot of people have motorbikes. There is uh, very little driver education here. Uh, the government doesn't provide it. There are driving schools. Very few people could afford those. Um, lane lines are just a suggestion and hardly a suggestion. If there's, if there's two lanes, uh, Filipinos will make three or four out of it, and they do so willingly. They'll move over and make way for a line of motorbikes in the middle lane, like they do in California. Motor, motorbikes, motorcycles are allowed to drive between lanes on the lane line in California. I don't know if there's any other states that do that or, or any other countries, but here it's very common. In fact, uh, I am very uncomfortable <laughs> with with two other vehicles in the same lane I'm in, and and we're almost touching knees. If one person makes a wrong move, you know, if they've got to swerve to, to miss something, uh, or they're not paying attention, or they're or they're, or they're texting, or whatever it is, uh, it's not a safe situation. So I don't like driving in town. Um, once you get on in the province, it's a little bit easier, but there's a lot of risks there too. There are, especially at night, and I, I basically refuse to drive at night. There are so many vehicles without lights, or only one light. Uh, there are dogs, there are kids, there are obstacles, uh, just crazy things uh, that can happen in the night. It's bad enough during the daytime. If you don't know already, um, your, your foreign license officially is good for 90 days in the Philippines. So if you've got a car license, good for 90 days to drive a car. If you have a motorbike license, good for 90 days. Now, in reality, I've, I've been told, but uh, maybe I shouldn't say this, that, that, uh, that if it hasn't expired, under most circumstances, nobody's going to bother you. I don't know if that's fact or fiction. I've been told that by a number of times, uh, even by a government employee. But that could that could change very quickly. A few years ago, they made it a little more difficult to get a driver's license for a foreigner. And uh, I've had a number of people describe it to me. I attempted uh, three times to do it, and I was given different reasons. No, you can't have a license because you're... Your visa is not good for a year, things like that. And I now have a visa that is, uh, that is good for a longer period of time, so I was able to attain a license. Um, I have heard that many of the provinces, it is easier to get a license than it is in the city where they're more strict. I, I went over to uh, an LTO, Land Transportation Office, what we call DMV offices in much of the United States. Uh, went, went to one uh, that was my last attempt before I was successful, and he said, no, you can't have it. Gave me about three different reasons. Uh, you, you can't apply for a license because of this or because of this. And, uh, but he said, here, he gave me a name. He said, here, contact this person. He might be able to help you. So if you have just a little bit of an imagination, you might be able to figure out what that meant. One thing you will find different here, I don't know any other country that honks so much, so much honking going on, a whole lot of honking going on here. And, uh, you know, in, in, in the U.S., if you honk at somebody, it usually means, hey, I'm, I, don't, I don't appreciate what you did. Uh, I'm, I'm mad at you. Um, you want to fight? <laughs> Something like that. Most honking here is to alert somebody, a pedestrian, another vehicle. Hey, 
I'm coming up beside you because we're sharing lanes. Um, it can be that. Uh, taxi drivers will honk to, if you're standing on the side of the road, will honk to get your attention, say, hey, do you need a ride? Um, they will honk when they're see, they see their buddy. They, there's a whole lot of honking going on. I think less these days uh, after the two years of lockdown. It seems like there's less honking. I don't see too much. This was, I almost had an accident there, this 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 jeepney had stopped to pick somebody up and just immediately pulled right out into the, around another vehicle into my lane. And I braked hard, and fortunately the person behind me stopped in time. But, so there's a whole lot of vehicles here, and uh, you don't know what they're going to do. A lot of the rules that we're used to, like no U-turns, U-turns are very common. And they make them from the far right lane into the oncoming traffic. And people stop. They allow it. They know that's part of the system. Um, very few traffic lights and or stop signs here. So just like here, people just continue to move. As long as there's movement, they, they come on out. And people stick their nose out from a side street. And vehicles will stop, and they'll let them come out of that side street, sometimes a very busy side street for a while, and then the other side will come. Um, and, and the point being, you're, you're going to come to a stop. up If there's a stop sign up ahead, you're probably going to hit that stop sign anyway and sit at a red light. So there's no reason to race to the stoplight when you can stop and let other people proceed from a different direction. Now I have rented uh, motorbikes on three occasions, uh, once for seven days. Uh, those rentals can run anywhere from like 250, 300, 400, 500 a day, uh, depending on where you're at. If you're in a high tourist area, they're a little bit higher. If you rent a longer period of time, like for a week or a month, uh, you can negotiate the price down quite a bit, I think generally. There are car rental places at the airport and other places around the cities. Um, and uh, they've, they've got uh, various options. And getting back to the travel situation here, um, I've been able to travel from Cebu uh, with, with Filipino friends, uh, with, with JR from JRC Visa Consultancy, an agency I use, and I've done many interviews with them. I've traveled with them uh, from Cebu City down to the south of Cebu, gotten on a ferry, went over to Dumaguete uh, without any issues. Uh, there, there are many areas that you can travel um, pretty freely here in the Philippines once you're here. And uh, John from the Philippine Experience, he's, he's the guy that... Uh, made it over here unvaccinated and uh, I'll put a link to some of his information in the description of the video. And uh, anyway, uh, we'll, we'll see. He's out of his quarantine, number of days in quarantine. Um, but there are some areas that for the most part the Philippines is considered low risk, level one risk, low risk. There are a few areas they still consider level two risk. Uh, in reality, that doesn't change very much. Uh, on paper it does, but the fact that after two more, more than two years of travel restrictions, Philippine people are trying to survive. Many have not survived in their businesses, their livelihood. And they're trying to survive, and uh, the local authorities, the LGUs, understand that much better than the higher-ups in government, I think, uh, much like many places around the world when these lockdowns came on. Uh, one, of the, one of the top guys involved in decision-making made a statement uh, not so many months ago. He said, you know what, when, when we were discussing all the lockdowns and restrictions, very little discussion centered around what what are the bad effects of all these uh, things, the lockdowns, the travel restrictions on the economy, on people's livelihoods, on the people's health. Very little discussion in that direction. 
So the new president, Marcos, came out recently and he said, absolutely, uh, we will not lock down the country again. The, the country, the, the, the country's economy, the people's economic situation, uh, their lives, their livelihood uh, was affected uh, very severely uh, by this and we will not do that again, regardless, basically is what he said. Now travel costs, uh, have been going up in a lot of places and probably will continue to go up with the increased inflation, uh, increased uh, fuel prices and such. Um, a lot of, uh, I think even one of the Philippines airlines stated they were going to add a fuel surcharge. One of the things that makes it difficult in traveling here in the Philippines is that uh, there, there are one or a couple of sites that try to give out information by region, by city, by tourist area about uh, how can you travel here, what are the requirements and restrictions, you know, do you need a vaccine card, do you need a, a, some kind of vaccine test before you go within a certain period of time. Reality is often different than these official uh, statements. and. So how are you going to know? Well, you don't know until if some other locals, some other people who travel there, and they they tell you, yeah, we're, we're, we weren't asked for any documents, even though they had prepared documents ahead of time. So I've, uh, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I don't think most people are not going to risk traveling until all the restrictions are lifted. You know, there's just... It's too difficult as a tourist, uh, not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, can you travel to areas you want to travel to uh, once you get to another country? You know, there's I think there's over 55 countries who have dropped all restrictions. No vaccine required, no testing required, no limit on your uh, ability to travel around their countries. And uh, other Southeast Asian countries are have been uh, opening them up. Up, opening up and the Philippines if they don't do that they're going to lose a huge opportunity a lot of potential people go to other countries and say hey I like I like it here now I want to come next time I come back I'm going to go there and I'm going to these other areas of the country this is J Center Mall where uh, immigration the main immigration in Cebu offices up on the second floor and I'm going to go around the back I'm going to BO insurance and I'll show you how to get there. And go around the back side, basically. You can come in from a different direction, but this is the way I know. Easiest way for me to go. They're building a new big condominium on the back side called J Towers, I believe. And it will be connected, connected to J Mall. Now, J Mall is, a, is an older, smaller mall, and I think they're really going to have to do a major remodeling of that mall and maybe uh, expand it a bit uh, to get more and more people interested in, in the uh, J Towers. Let me go around back here. There are uh, There's a place back here where they got hobble hobble drivers and jeepneys come out of one little side road back here, I think, you can get, if you want to ride a jeepney that road just to the right there that I passed. Now this is the other side. I came in on the right side of J Center Mall and I've gone around the back side. I'm going to take a right on this road and you can get here around the front side too but it's not. You, know, you got the taxis and stuff. Anyway BO Insurance is right on the left. Right, 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 right here to the left here. And I'm going to go up and park just a little ways ahead there. But you can get the insurance. They'll help you with your uh, vehicle registrations, renewals, all that sort of thing. And uh, anyway, thanks for coming along. Stay safe, stay healthy. Hopefully we can all travel freely in this world again very soon. And uh, we'll see you next time.